This is the Cholo News Report for Saturday 17, August 2019. In response to reports that U.S. President Donald Trump expressed interest in the United States acquiring Greenland, Greenland's Foreign Minister Ain Lone Bagger dismisses the idea, noting on Twitter, that a better and more equal partnership with Denmark should be the way forward for a stronger and longer-term free Greenland. Greenland is rich in valuable resources such as minerals, the purest water and ice, fish stocks, seafood, renewable energy and is a new frontier for adventure tourism. If he is truly contemplating this, then this is final proof that he has gone mad. Foreign Affairs spokesman for the populist Danish People's Party, Soren Espersen, told national broadcaster Doctor but it's also believed that the receding ice may expose toxic nuclear waste that was left at several United States military sites during the Cold War. Trump is due to visit Copenhagen in September, and the Arctic will be on the agenda during meetings with the Prime Ministers of Denmark and Greenland, an autonomous Danish territory. Greenland, a self-ruling part of Denmark located between the North Atlantic and Arctic Oceans, is dependent on Danish economic support. Greenland is gaining attention from global superpowers including China, Russia and the United States due to its strategic location and its mineral resources. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says U.S. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib can enter the country, on humanitarian grounds, if she submits a request to visit family and promises not to promote a boycott against Israel. Congresswoman Tlaib declines, saying visiting my grandmother under these oppressive conditions meant to humiliate me would break my grandmother's heart. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, under public pressure from Republican President Trump, on Thursday said he would not allow the pair to make their trip. Tlaib and Omer have voiced support for the pro-Palestinian boycott, divestment, sanctions movement which opposes the Israeli occupation and policies toward Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. Trump has been attacking Tlaib and Omer, along with lawmakers Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York and Honor Presley of Massachusetts, all women of color, known as the Squad for Weeks accusing them of hostility to Israel in a barrage condemned by critics as racist. A Euro Airlines Airbus 321 crash lands in a field near Zhukovsky International Airport in Moscow region, Russia. The event is dubbed the miracle over Raymansk, as only 23 passengers had minor injuries, similar to United States Airways Flight 1549. Preliminary reports say the aircraft struck a flock of seagulls. Videos posted to social media show the passengers of flight U6178, evacuating from the plane and making a path through the field. Precisely due to their professionalism, sole possession and coordinated actions managed to land a plane without tragic consequences, a Euro Airlines statement said. A Cessna citation carrying former NASCAR driver Dale Earnhardt Jr., his wife and infant daughter crashes on landing at Elizabethton Municipal Airport in Elizabethton, Tennessee. All occupants survive without serious injury. The Federal Aviation Administration said a Cessna citation rolled off the end of a runway and caught fire after landing. Earnhardt, a team owner in the circuit's second level and an auto racing analyst, was likely headed to NASCAR events there. The Monster Energy Series will hold one of the most popular races of the season Saturday night on the dot. 533-mile track. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro gives a speech, wherein he accuses former Colombian President Alvaro Uribe, Uribe's Vice President Francisco Santos Calderon, and Venezuelan politician Lester Toledo as of planning to kill him. It was not the first time Maduro, a socialist, accused politicians from neighboring Colombia of plotting against him, as relations between the two countries deteriorate amid an economic crisis in Venezuela that has prompted more than one million migrants to settle in Colombia. Toledo, who is based in Colombia, has been designated by Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido as his international coordinator for efforts to bring in humanitarian aid. Maduro has accused Colombia and the United States of being behind a drone explosion at a military parade last year, 
which he describes as an assassination attempt.